Welcome to Hidden Histories. Tonight is the fifth episode of Urban 15's online e-magazine for cultural and arts activities here in San Antonio. We are part of the latest 300 years of San Antonio history uh, celebrations. Uh, this has been an ongoing project throughout this community where arts organizations, community leaders, uh, governance, uh, religious communities. We're all celebrating how San Antonio has come together since it was given its name 300 years ago, though people have been living here for over 10,000 years under various names. So tonight we're going to explore two things. One is a hidden history that it comes from a community project by Girl Scouts and a much, much, much older uh, community project here in San Antonio from the Kiwanis Club where we're going to be exploring since 1957 a particular cultural presentation that it was done here at the Arneson and it uh, probably for another 50 years as well, Fiesta Noche del Rio. And we have a panel of guests who have been with the organization for all this time and we have some dancers and musicians who have been working with the group. So uh, thank you for uh, uh, tuning in and logging on. We'd like to thank our two most important sponsors, that's Santicos uh, Foundation through the San Antonio Area Foundation and the City of San Antonio's uh, Film Commission. They have made uh, funds available for us to do this <coughs> streaming broadcast. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank also in advance all of our guest curators who are here tonight and they will be identified on screen as they talk. Okay, right now though, I'd like to talk about a project. It's called 300 Years, 300 Libraries. It is Troop 300 uh, and what they have decided to do is put 300 free mini libraries in the San Antonio neighborhoods. And they're doing this uh, with volunteer work from high schools, from uh, trades people, from parents, and they have 300 libraries that they've given to community groups and to individuals. And Urban 15 was very happy that we were a recipient of one of those. And right now, uh, we have uh, members of Troop 300 that will be here. And we have uh, Arlene Regolado, who is uh, the troop leader from Troop 300, and she's going to give us a little history about what they've been up to. Arlene? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting us here to talk about our great project that we've been working on since last year. So I'm here, like he said, uh, on behalf of Girl Scout Troop 300. We have four girls here in the front that are actually two of my daughters and two of Porquina's daughters. Um, and in honor of San Antonio's 300 year anniversary, our Girl Scout troops decided to do a huge project and it's called the <coughs> Little Free Library Project. So our project focuses on Girl Scout Troop 300 overseeing the construction and the installation of 300 little free libraries like this, like this one actually right here. <laughs> Girls, can you turn it over so they can go ahead and see the, the idea? So these little libraries, they come in all different sizes and shapes. People get really creative actually in building them. We actually have high schools that are building them currently and we get a guitar form, we get a SeaWorld, and businesses are doing it like their businesses. It's a great project, and we have families volunteering, wanting to do it themselves, paint it themselves, install it themselves, and we also are doing community projects where anybody can come out and help, and most of them are being done by the Girl Scouts themselves. So it's a very nice project, <coughs> and um, there will be place pretty much in the historic city core um, in the communities 
the idea is to put these libraries where it's difficult for people to get to libraries or they don't have a driving distance to a library or um, schools, parks. Some people are saying, can I have one in my neighborhood? And they're putting it in their front yard. So they're pretty much anywhere and for anyone. It's for adults and children. The idea is get a book, bring a book. So the idea is the book is going to be traveling all around through our community. Yeah, it's very nice. The girls actually started the idea of the project because last year they did a book drive and collected 803 books for SA Reads. This year they actually more than doubled it and they were able to get 1,949 books um, to SA Reads programs. So they are actually going to be providing us books for our little libraries so that way they can stay sustainable and we can always have the libraries growing in the community. Um, for those who are not familiar about the Little Free Library Project, it's a nonprofit organization. It encourages love of reading, strengthens community, and sparks creativity by fostering neighborhood book exchanges around the world. We are working with partnerships with other nonprofit organizations, businesses, families. If you would like to sponsor a library, we do have a website and we do have business cards that we'll be happy to give out with more information. But pretty much you get a little plaque, like this one here. It says number four, 300 Little Free Library. And it says built by the Sanchez and Thomas family. So you get your little plaque in the little library so the community knows who, was, who donated the library, who built the library. And that way you can get recognized as well. Um, let's see. Our hope is that Girl Scout Troop 100 helps San Antonio stay a city that focuses on the future. After all, literacy is the love of reading, is a life skill, a passion, and a legacy that we should share with all our children. Thank you. Tonight, uh, in the line of cultural literacy, cultural awareness, uh, there were times in San Antonio where artists had a craft and they could not find a venue to perform. They were forced to work in small venues, small theaters, clubs, under a tent and the carpas. And somehow or another, it was very strange that we had such beautiful venues in San Antonio to perform in that just weren't available. And one of our most beautiful theater venues, performing venues, is the Arneson River Theater. And it was created during the WPA by people who had been lost their jobs. The government came in and they helped them with jobs that made better places for their communities. So we ended up with the Sunken Gardens, the Sunken Gardens Theater, the River Walk, the Arneson River Theater, La Vita. All of these were made by craftsmen and people who needed jobs and there were no jobs available but they love their community they stayed here and made beautiful things the Arneson River theater has become the home of many individuals I, I see people there all the time who go there and they look at the space oh I used to dance there when I was a little girl oh I used to sing there when I was a young man so it is a very important space and there is an organization in town, the Alamo Kiwanis Club, who noticed that this venue was available and they decided to promote the finest of San Antonio's Hispanic musicians and dancers and let the world know what we really do. If it hadn't been for the Arneson River as a megaphone of culture, there were people out there in the world would never know just how important our community music and dancers are. And I want to thank the Kiwanis in advance for not only just providing jobs but to us, but providing the world our music, our dance forms. So uh, tonight we're going to explore how this happened in 1957. We have a guest curator. Liz Ruiz, who was a performer at that very theater. And we have a panel of people that will be participating in bringing memories, and they will be bringing stories, and they'll be bringing deep thoughts about how we need to continue cultural literacy 
throughout the world, throughout San Antonio, and throughout this very neighborhood. So thank you very much for Hidden Histories. Uh, let's enjoy the evening. Well, I would like to thank Urban 15 for inviting us to be here. And I guess when you're invited to be part of a program that's called Hidden Histories, that means you're getting old. <laughs> I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about the show, Fiesta Noche del Rio. But once again, seriously, George, thank you so much for having us here tonight. And we are going to begin with the formation of the Alamo Kiwanis Club. And Jim, you as a past president, why don't you tell us about how the Alamo Kiwanis Club started and the mission of the organization? Sure. Well, uh, Kiwanis is a, a member organization of an international group called Kiwanis International that uh, was founded in uh, 1915 in the city of Detroit. Our international headquarters is in Indian Indianapolis, and we're comprised of a variety of service clubs from 79 different countries. And uh, Qantas overall has 600,000 members. We raise over $100 million each year for charity and perform 18 and a half million volunteer hours each year for service projects in the community. Um, our own Alamo Qantas Club was chartered in 1947. We presently have 100 members and uh, we're the largest club uh, in our division and we're within, within what they call the Texas Oklahoma District. Um, and although many of our members are retired in our club, uh, most of our overwhelming majority of our members come from the leaders of the business community and uh, include business owners, doctors, lawyers, engineers, accountants, uh, realtors, bankers, uh, people in the oil and gas industry and the insurance industry. And uh, there's a little history. When, when I first joined Kiwanis, it was an all-male organization, but since 1987, we've officially been allowed to accept a women. Uh, today, uh, Kiwanis, Alma Kiwanis has six members, of which two of our, those members are uh, on our board and are active in our leadership team. On the, Very in the good. Club. And we have a lot of women out here, so you may be picking sure. up some new members. <laughs> well, we hope, hope so. so. We hope yes. so. And uh, Kiwanis comes from a Native American uh, word meaning uh, we trade. But in 1920, uh, that motto was changed to we build which is that we serve the children of the world, and uh, which we have done through a variety of fundraising projects. And uh, uh, in recent years, the international organization has adopted the Eliminate Project, where we have teamed with UNICEF to uh, help uh, eliminate uh, maternal neonatal tetanus, which is a, dis a disease that kills actually 34,000 babies each year. Our Alamo Kwanzaa Club is supports that, that project, we've contributed to it, uh, but our primary uh, focus in Alma Kiwanis has been and always will be to raise uh, funds for our youth serving charities in the San Antonio area. Very worthy cause. Well, thank you for all thank that you. you do. I think that deserves a round of applause. Thank you, James. Thank you. Now, I'm gonna turn to Doug. Not that you were there when it first started, but you do know the history of how Fiesta Noche del Rio began. Right? Well, yes, and, but I think we need to look at it in context of, of what the River Walk was like. And in 1929 is when Robert Hugman first pitched the concept of the Paseo del Rio, and uh, it, it, they started it, and it was finally completed in 1941 in about April, and of course, in December of 1941, the world changed significantly. And for a number of years, there really wasn't much activity uh, like that down on the river uh, until after 1945, the end of the war. In 1946 is when Casa Ria opened. And Casa Ria was actually the first business to ever actually try to incorporate the, the river as an amenity for its guest. You know, before then, the buildings that fronted along the river, it was the back door. No one really wanted to look at it. No, it was like a like a dark alley you would like want to go to. I mean, people would put the garbage out there. Exactly. And, now it, it, and it's hard for us to imagine because our river walk is so beautiful, and now it's one of the top tourist attractions in Texas, not That's, just here in San Antonio, but in Texas. In Texas, and yeah. but you know, we the uh, the city came. We would, Alamo Kiwanis had already started raising money to help different charities around San Antonio. We had, we had a, a, a group of vending machines that we serviced, and the city came to us and said, look, 
we've got this venue, nobody's using it. Can y'all think of a way that you, you could incorporate it into your fundraising, but it would also help to bring people to the river? And of course, you know, we had, we had some people that had the wisdom to say yes. Some and visionaries. Some Thanks visionaries, and we were fortunate enough to, uh, to enlist uh, Rosita Fernandez at the very beginning. And uh, the rest, as they say, is, yes. has been history for us. And Rosita Fernandez, of course, you teamed up with her. She was a star. She performed for presidents, not only the United States, but the presidents of Mexico, their wives. She performed for a prince, for movie stars. I mean, she was in the movie, That's The cool. Alamo, with John Wayne. Uh, she could have gone anywhere, but she wanted to showcase San Antonio talent. And, and she teamed up with the Alamo Kiwanis, and it was a beautiful thing. And now, how about we hear from the First Lady of Song, our Ambassadress of Song, Rosita Fernandez herself. fabulous Rosita Fernandez and as you can see it, it wasn't that she was just a wonderful singer which she truly was but it, it's that personality and the way she connected with the audience and into whoever she was singing to very 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 special lady and of course the Rosita the bridge is Rosita's bridge <laughs> that bridge at the Arneson River Theater with a plaque right there and Frank you had a front row seat to this for many, many years. and, and I, I still know, do. That's right. You still do. <laughs> You're still helping out. Now, how did you become involved? My association with the Alamo Kiwanis Fiesta Noche Rio started in 1977 when my primo, Homer Gaitan, who at that time was the house manager for the show, called and asked me, Primo, will, will you take a couple of weekends of the show for me because, you know, we're not going on vacation. We need to take a vacation. I said, okay, just tell me what to do. Teach me what to do, and, and I'll be happy to do so. 
So 42 summers later, I'm still with the show. <laughs> 42 <laughs> years, Frank. And, and I don't know what Fiesta Noche del Rio would be like without your smiling face, because you are, the I, I say, the official greeter. You greet yeah. everyone with a smile, make everybody feel welcome. We appreciate that. Thank you. But the basic question is, is why, why stay with a program of this type for so long? And there, basically, there's two, two points. Number one, the Alamo Kiwanis give back to the community more than any organization that I had ever belonged to. I'm an educator myself, and so I belong to various organizations. Secondly, the performers who come through, they turn around and they contribute back to the community in many different ways. And the person that comes to mind is Joe Nick Garza. Joe Nick is the choir, choir director for the Mariachi Choir a very unique and special choir at San Fernando Cathedral. Now, what does is, what is, uh, Fiesta Noche del Rio mean to the community? It's like the rose, you know, in the Hispanic culture, the rose is a very, very special uh, flower. So I'd like to share the following poem reflecting on not only the Alamo Quinoas, but the Fiesta Noche del Rio uh, performers who have contributed for so many years. Intima flor de amor, que brilla con los secretos más hondos del mar, refleja los más profundos pensamientos del ser humano, comunicando un mensaje íntimo, cual es la rosa entre el corazón. Que vive fiesta noche de río. Viva. 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 Poem, the intimate flower. Oh, this is just beautiful, Frank. Thank you. Uh, and there are many people who have contributed, not only the dancers, not only the singers, but people like our own Bear County Commissioner, Paul Elizondo. And I know many people in our community remember his orchestra, and he led an orchestra there at Fiesta Noche del Rio. And I've got to say, uh, you may know him as a Bear County Commissioner, you may know him as uh, an orchestra leader, but he was my junior high band director at Edgewood Junior High. So now, <laughs> let's go to the video. My name is Paul Elizondo, and I was a band director here uh, for the orchestra that uh, provided the accompaniment for Fiesta Noche del Rio. I started probably in 62 or 61, with, uh, as a sub with Mateo Camargo, worked tw two years here with Johnny Esquivel, and then uh, after that I was, had my own band here for 12 to 14 years. It was a, it was a long run, and uh, we were playing a show that alternated with this called I'll, I'll Take Texas, and uh, during 68, during Hemisphere, we, we played uh, the 52 shows from Fiesta Noche del Rio, plus uh, two nights on the other show. So we were working here uh, all through Hemisphere about uh, six or seven nights a week. Well, you know, it means many things. First of all, it's a very fun show and, and uh, it's, it's a stable of, of, the, of the culture and life of the community. Uh, besides that, it has a very worthy purpose and then it gives money to, to Kiwanis for their charities. And on top of that, uh, uh, it was uh, always a challenge to get the music up ready for this show. It, it was a lot of uh, lot of publicity, uh, but it was it was good for me too because personally, uh, I had a band and orchestra, and it put me on the map because of the advertising for the show. And uh, I had a very successful music career all through the '60s, '70s, and into the '80s because of this show. Well, at the county, we, we value it very much. Uh, you know, that's uh, and the city, of course. Um, what it's done, it's uh, made a lot of the people who visit the city uh, be aware of the culture, of one aspect of the culture in the city. And, and so uh, the, the culture that comes from here uh, and the, the uh, professionalism of the show uh, speaks very well for the city. It's not just a uh, podunk city anymore, you know, little sleepy town. Uh, this is a, a professional endeavor. There were a lot of them. Uh, 
One time, one of the people in the audience fell into the in the river. Uh, another time, uh, there was uh, some bad blood between the featured singer and the director of the show, and uh, the singer punched him. And uh, there was a, a, a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, unrest there after that. And uh, but uh, usually it were very good memories. They were they were very very. Uh, uh, sweet people uh, in in the crew and and uh, everybody got along well. I think the performers, you know, besides their own careers and before, besides performing in a show like this, uh, were very happy that uh, the proceeds were going to charity and the Kiwanis do an outstanding job. We owe the late Berta Almaguer a debt of gratitude. And with us tonight is her niece, Diana Rosa, <laughs> who you. also is the daughter of Rosita Fernandez. Yes. So tell us about what it was like you performing in the show. Because you, you danced oh, yes. in Fiesta Noche del Rio. Yes. And your mama was the star. What yeah. was that like? Well, thank you for asking that. Um, you know how we celebrate once a year, take your daughter to work. <laughs> I got to do that a lot. All the time. <laughs> I got to do that quite a bit. And because of that, you know, I was exposed to a lot of things that maybe most kids wouldn't be. And it was really awesome. We got to meet a lot of wonderful people and we got to make friends with many people that, uh, you know, was this 10 year old kid, but got to know a lot of important people. It was really nice. You were a 10 year old. Oh, kid when you were performing? No, oh, more, younger than that, but yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you started dancing, I guess, with your... With, your with Miami, mm -hmm. two and a half. Oh, that's when you started. Yeah, was, they're barely out of diapers. They started, your mama started you very, very, <laughs> very, young. very young. Yes. And you were part of the Señoritas. Yes. Right? Yes. How, how many were there? We were five, and we were known as Las Cinco Señoritas. Oh, Las Cinco yes. Señoritas. Yes. And what kind of dances did you We perform? did uh, mostly Spanish, but we did whatever they wanted us to do as far as either the Mexican or the Spanish dancing. But we prefer, kind of preferred the Spanish dancing. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I understand that one of your relatives was also part of the yes, Senoritas. Yes. Uh -huh. Later on, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, and I think uh, your your cousin. We do have a video yes. of your cousin. Do you know which one? Because you and I and all of us here, yeah. I know, have lots and lots of cousins. Oh Absolutely. yes, I have which one? Which one many cousins. Yeah, Sylvia is in that video. All right. Well, let's go to that video okay. and see Sylvia perform. Okay. My name is uh, Sylvia Fernandez, and I was performing here at Fiesta Noche del Rio during the 70s. My aunt used to be the singer here, Rosita Fernandez, and she, you, she was always given tickets for the family, and we'd always have a chance to come and sit, and I'd be right there at the first step, uh, just Google-eyed, staring at the, at the beautiful performance and the shows, and I just, knew eventually I was going to be here. I was going to be up there on that stage and it happened during the 70s. My specialty in the show was that of flamenco dancer. I would first start with the señoritas. I was with a group and then I was placed as a soloist and uh, I was coupled and uh, it was a wonderful time in my life was so important to me and it's now that I look back and see what it was. Um, it gave me a goal, it, was, it gave me a platform. All of us came from the City Recreation Little Dancers and there wasn't a place to exhibit all that talent and so we knew that this was one of the next stages to, to make, to, to reach. Um, this opened up so many avenues. It, it made us able to speak to the public. It, it uh, opened up other uh, performance avenues. We danced in Vegas because that was the next step after this. And we danced in Tahoe. And many of our dancers went all over the world, but especially in the United States. So it, it gave us that, uh, that avenue into show business that was just San Antonio's own. So unique to San Antonio. It's what makes us special sometimes. I've talked to people that have come from Japan and different parts of the world, 
and they say they want to come to the Artists of River Theater and see the show that they've heard about it. Uh, it's so well renowned that it just amazes me how many people are familiar with it. Uh, the Kiwanis did a great job. They got they got this show and uh, everybody to notice us, and we're very fortunate. And there were many families who were part of Fiesta Noche del Rio. Uh, the Martinez family, the Ceballos, the Gonzalez, Garcia, Angulo, Lopez, just to name a few. And of course, then there was the famous <laughs> First family of flamenco, the champions. Ole! Ole! Thank you, thank you. We have Chayito here tonight. and Tell us what it was like. You were a child star. Oh my gosh, yes. It was wonderful. It was, it was, uh, I've been asked, you know, you know, if you had to do it again, would you would you want to be born into a family of artists that had you there at Fiesta Noche del Rio and you were there all the summers? And but I wouldn't change a thing. Curro and Teresa, our legacy in San Antonio, they brought flamenco to San Antonio, so it was a beautiful um, to be part to be part of a family that passed on the art which flamenco has taken me all over the world with great artists, dancers, other singers, and so. Being a part of a family like that is just very, very beautiful. I, um, it felt good to sing for my mother, to sing to my father's guitar. It was, it was a beautiful. It was just a wonderful memory, and I'm glad that I was able to live that, to be a part of an artistic family. It just How old were you? I was six years old. I think it was five when I auditioned, and then I, in November, we started the summer, and then I turned six. And uh, I stayed there till I was 13. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, mm, I want a summer. I want to go for <laughs> vacation. I had to write what I did at Fiesta Noche de Rio every time we went back to school. What did you do over the summer? Yes. And I, you know, many memories. I, I remember falling in the river at least three times, <laughs> trying to get guppies out of the water, you know. Well, uh, while you were a child, you had to entertain yourself in between acts yeah. and, you know, waiting for your time to go on stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and it was beautiful to sit there and watch my mother and listen to my father's guitar. And oh. I think uh, they were from, they're from the beginning. And, um, but it made it more, uh, it was better for them after they did that movie, The Alamo with John Wayne, where Teresa was able to dance on the table in the cantina scene. And then um, my father played all the background music. So that gave them their push to make flamenco what it is today because not too many people understood right. the art of right. flamenco. And, so. and we may have had the, the ballet folklorico, you know, from Mexico. Yes. We had those dances. Yes. Um, but the flamenco was something different. It's a whole different thing from, from the Spain, Spanish. I keep telling people, and it's mm -hmm. not flamingo. No. <laughs> so what got, happened to that guy on Wheel of Fortune? He uh, lost all that fortune. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's fla right. Flamingo dancers. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> flamenco. And now I do believe we have a video of your mama that oh, is a champion, yeah. the first lady of flamenco. Ole! Ole! My name is Teresa Champion, and I'm a flamenco dancer, and my husband, Curro, was a flamenco guitarist. We started the show, Fiesta Nocedrillo, in 1957, and now that they called me for this interview, I said, oh, right, I'm going to be going back there they are to the heart of San Antonio. I always said the Arneson River Theater was the heart of San Antonio, and the water was their veins, the veins of San Antonio. So when they called me, I said, okay, I got to go again, and um, I danced for many years, more than 20 years in San Antonio. Then my daughter, Chayito, became the flamenco singer in, in the artist on the show, Fiesta Noche del Rio. And, um, and, and that was my biggest uh, thrill, you know, that to have my, my family, my, my husband, Curro, um, myself, and Chayito, she was a show st star back then, yeah. Along comes Fiesta Noche del Rio, and, um, and Rosita was the director, and Rosita, a dear friend of ours, a beautiful lady, called us to perform, and we performed. We kept performing in 1957, yes. Well, because it was, there was nobody, uh, we don't have no shows in San Antonio. I think you were the first people to present the art and the talent of San Antonio, because uh, there was nothing here, so 
I uh, really appreciate that for Fiesta Noche Dio because it gave us a chance to, 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 keep, to show our talents, you know, and, 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 and they used to say, curro, curro plus guitar equals flamenco. And I see you have a photo. And I have a photo of my husband. He played for many, many years, and I did too. Well, one of, one, one of the wild, one, this is not wild, but when I started Fiesta Noche de Rio, they told us, well, we cannot pay uh, guitars and dancer. And uh, I said, well, what are we going to do? And, he, and Kuro was talking, no, not me, it was Kuro. And Kuro would say, you know what, just pay Teresa, and then don't pay me. So Kuro was a volunteer for about maybe three or four years. And then finally, you know, he got a, a salary, and, and that was it. The, the funniest thing that happened to me here, we were dancing and you could see all the rats from the river on back of us and we just like scream and you know, and then one time I was dancing here with the Fiesta Noche de Rio and um, I was coming in, performing out of the door and I see all these people getting up and I said, oh, they don't even know me, I haven't even danced and they're having a standing ovation. They love me, they like me. And I was all, and then everybody starts running and then the dancers start running. It was some snakes, a big snake coming out of the river. <laughs> so many things, so many things that happen in Fiesta, you would not believe a lot of things, but you know, we're in glory. But like I said, thank you Fiesta Noche del Rio for giving us the opportunity to all the dancers and singers and, uh, that perform here because we were lost at that time. There was nowhere to go and you gave us the opportunity to, to perform and to do the show and we really appreciate it because from these shows, we had a lot of other shows come from there. The Alamo, um, uh, Hawaii, from a, a lot of places. People that would uh, here and they would book us for shows. Not only me, but only Felipe de la Rosa that he passed, that he just passed away a month ago. He was discovered here with the charro, la cuchi cuchi, and so I said, you gave us a lot, a lot of opportunities. Thank you again for being good to us, for the artists of San Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And with me is uh, one of the very, very talented dancers from the past, not only a dancer, but a choreographer. And I know you're a great teacher because if you could teach me a few steps, you could teach anybody. <laughs> Vivian, tell us about your experience. Absolutely, at thank you for asking. Well, I, as you all have mentioned many times, Parks and Recreation was kind of the incubator that started a lot of students uh, in, in the interest of dance. Mm -hmm. And once they felt like they had a passion for it, they would go on to Teresa Champion Studio, uh, Emma Ramos Ballet Folklorico de San Antonio, my own studio, Dance America, or Zamora Dance Company. And then once they got to a level that they felt they were professional, then it was their time to audition for Fiesta Noche del Rio and, right. and get in there. And it gave them an opportunity to showcase their talents and uh, uh, hone their skills, like they said, to go on to other, uh, other venues, such as Vegas and California. I have some of my, my dancers performing on riverboats and, and, and different things of that sort, and teaching and they were on solid gold. They were, I mean, just all over the place. So, so it was, yeah, Fiesta Noche del Rio was a launching pad. It for was many a launching for, for those that wanted yes, to be yes. a, a professional dancer. I myself danced for six years. I choreographed for a couple of years, uh, and now the legacy goes on because one of uh, my dancers that worked with me is now the choreographer and director of the show for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful legacy for San Antonio. It not only gives a showcase for dancers, but it lets us share a little history with the people that come from out of town and they take a little bit home with them in, in their heart, a little memory that hopefully they'll always be special to San Antonio. That's right. It's such a unique venue to yeah. be sitting there enjoying an outdoor show like Fiesta Noche del Rio at Absolutely. the beautiful Arneson River Theater. And I know you have lots and lots of memories, oh, beautiful yeah. memories it of always, that. always that circle there, you know, the wind would come around and when there was lots of wind on certain nights, you would get blown back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're going this way, but the wind's right. taking you that way. And those skirts. I mean, yeah. it's so yes. difficult to manage the big, you know, oh, when yeah. you're doing the ranchera dances, you know, from Jalisco, those was, skirts weigh a lot, and when you have the wind fighting you, then that's it's difficult, a wonderful but memories. it's beautiful. Wonderful memories. Beautiful. And I know they get a lot of beautiful pictures. Pretty as a postcard, you know, when they, when the swirling skirts oh, are going right. around, and 
when they're so doing what they're money. supposed that's to right. do. That's right. That's right. And with that, we go to Elizabeth Sanchez Lopez. And we call her Lisa. That's right. And she is the current director of Fiesta Noche del Rio. And she's a singer, a dancer, a choreographer, and now the director. We're so proud of you. But, I, you know, one of the highlights for me watching the show was watching you do the... Uh, the Argentinian dance with the, with the ropes, the malambo. Right. Okay. Now, uh, tell us about some of the changes. As we heard before, we went from traditional folklorico and flamenco to moving in with the great uh, Felipe de la Rosa, who I was fo so fortunate enough to have been part of a dancer with him and to be on stage to dance that very famous bolero. I don't know if we all remember that dance, but it was a, such a gorgeous number. And... Um, to then to be able to move in and watch other dancers come out and even uh, the famous Patsy Torres came on stage mm -hmm. and changed the style from the Las Vegas act to now the Hano show. And then we followed in with bringing in personalities that the, like the very famous Mario Bosques mm -hmm. along with beautiful singer and, and talented Miss San Antonio, Regina Garcia, and many others like Eduardo Montemayor and your sister Elsa that took yes. over as a choreographer and director as mm -hmm. well as the show. And then we move into the 90s and that's where I came in. Now 27 years that I've, I've been a part of this show, you know, I like to say that within those years, I've taken what all of these historic traditions that we've had here in San Antonio, and I've made it part of the show to be able to keep that legacy alive, because I am a product of San Antonio dance in San Antonio Fine Arts, from city parks to all these dance studios. I mean, she was a great mentor, one of my teachers, mm -hmm. so was Felipe. And to be able to work with these people, along with all of those theme parks that came in, mm -hmm. that we learned from the choreographers and directors from Disney and Opryland, all of those styles of performance is what I brought in. And so now, you know, we move into a whole new generation of performance. We now have to be fast paced and go with our, in our generation of multimedia and social media. So, you know, our dance numbers now are very fast paced. We have plenty of more uh, audience participation. Um, and now we're starting to use modern dance music with some some traditional movement. And then most importantly, we're also going in with the social media. What we like to do now is with our audience members is for them to take photos and to connect with us so that way they get the full experience of what Fiesta Noche is all about. So I think right now Rosita's looking down on us and saying that's exactly what I wanted, to envision all the San Antonio talent and to keep that legacy alive. And that's what we're doing today. Yes, you're yeah. still just a you know, launching pad for these careers. And who knows, I mean, many of them go on to teach, you know, like Vivian was saying, at various studios and also for city parks and recreation. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful show. And like you said, it's very fast paced now, now to keep is. up with the times because people yeah. nowadays don't want to sit there for a exactly. long time. It's the same thing. So we got to keep the show That's moving right. and you're Many doing a fantastic changes, job. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. And so now entering the 62nd season. 62nd season. Wow. wow. And, yeah. and you're still singing? I'm while still you're singing. Directing. I'm still emceeing and directing and, and choreographing the show. We've got a, a great flamenco guitarist and who was a uh, Curro's protege, and mm -hmm. that is, you know, uh, Antonio, yes. Alejandro Antonio, who we'll see later on, you know, yes. this yes. this show this showcase, and uh, we've got some exceptional dancers along with mariachis. Oh my goodness, the various mariachis that we've had throughout the years, and mariachi Fiesta de San Antonio That's is no exception. Just a great mariachi group, so many male singers, you know. But we have to give credit to all the performers. Because you're talking about directors and choreographers, dancers, singers, not to mention the behind-the-scenes crew that went in every, every summer and with no hesitation put on the greatest show. And we say for the greatest cause. And not, yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. And now for the 62nd season. Can yes. you believe it? This is wonderful. Now, uh, uh, with live shows, a lot of things happen that are not planned. And uh, Chayito, right. you want to share one of your oh my stories? Oh my. I was a little girl, you know, and, and I remember they had a wonderful dance called La Pelea de Gallos, but they actually brought in fighting cocks that were worth like $1,000 each, and they would 
have the trainers standing by in case of anything happening. So they have these, and, and, and the dancers would go out, and then they'd put them down, and there was an actual fight. Those roosters were fighting and fighting, and then all of a sudden they went too close to the edge and they fell in the water. <laughs> and I was like, everybody was screaming because we knew that it's going to cost $1,000 <laughs> That bird dies, so they, the dancers jumped in, two male dancers jumped in, pulled the gallos, they were all like, you know, and this, this woman comes and says, give me those, because she was one of the trainers, and she flipped them over and started blowing in the behind. I was like, what is that? I was standing there as a child, I said, it's the other way around, right here is a, you know, so the those CPR, that's CPR, a, CPR, CPR okay. for roosters. All right. <laughs> Okay, and we'll have to put a little disclaimer there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. And, and uh, Lisa, you have yes. something. As we, talked, as we talked earlier about that yeah. Argentine Malambo group, well, I thought, you know, I've done the boleadoras, why not add fire to those little rocks at the very end? So I'm on stage and, and dancing and really getting into it so passionate. All of a sudden, here comes one of our Yanawana boats coming through the river. At the same time that I hit, that ball detaches from the string, so you see a ball of fire, and here comes the boat, and it falls right before. And I was telling them earlier, I could see my life go, and I'm going, I think I'm getting fired from this show. Speaking of fire. Yes. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm sure the audience probably thought, ooh, great, yes. bravo. <laughs> oh, wow, that was really exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, and now I think we do have a video of some of the great performances from Fiesta Noche del Rio. Yay! Wow, Fiesta Noche del Rio, the longest running outdoor show. We need to talk to the Guinness Book of World Records people and let them know that. But Matt, you are the chairman, and I want you to explain to us, you know, Alamo Kiwanis Club benefits many, many charities, and we're going to be showing some of them in the, in the slide. Sure. But how are those charities selected? Well, uh, basically, you know, what we like to do is, is you know, take in as many uh, re um, requests from different charities around town. Uh, and they submit to us, and once they do, we, we look them over, and if they are in line with the things that we're trying to do within the children's uh, community for children's services, uh, then we go with it. And also, you know, the more money we raise, uh, the more money we're able to give, which is always a big deal. And that's the most important part of what, what we're here for, and the most important part of being the chairman, and that, you know, we look at what we've done over the last few years, or a bunch of years, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and uh, hopefully we create some best practices and we create a new strategy for going forward. 
Um, so for example, like this year, um, we want to re-engage the local community. You know, we've done a very good job of entertaining guests from out of town. Um, they love the show, they come to town. But locals, they either don't remember the show, never saw the show, or they do remember it, but it's so long ago that they were there 20, 30 years ago. And so we want to get those folks to come back. We want them to bring their children. Uh, we want them to get re-engaged with that. And so, you know, what we do there is basically we have to drive a lot of awareness. And as Lisa mentioned earlier, social media is becoming a, a, a bigger and bigger component of what we do because it's a very cost-effective way right. To, to reach people. Yes, and, and you can also yeah. reach them. A lot of them are going down to the Riverwalk. Maybe they're going to have dinner or whatever. Sure. And then, you know, they'll see something right. and say, oh, Fiesta Noche de Rio is going mm -hmm. on. So you have yeah. that advantage yes. now with the social yeah. media. Traditionally, we've always grabbed that foot traffic. Right. Um, and we do some advertising, of course, but we, we just need to get more sophisticated uh, as more people are using their cell phones and iPads, yes. especially you know, when they're running around downtown. And, you know, to, to, and they make it very easy so that all yes. they have to do is click the button and away they go, you know, so yeah. they get their tickets. So uh, what do you envision now uh, for the next 10 years, 15 years, well, another 60 years? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can plan and look that far ahead. Well, be before we go here. there, I want to, uh, you know, this is our 300th anniversary yeah. uh, of the city of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that we want to do or we have stepped up to do is become uh, one of the uh, preferred or uh, official sponsor of the 300th anniversary by being a show. Uh, connected to the 300th anniversary. So uh, what we do is we then you know, work with Lisa, we develop the plan, and then one of the best things that I can do actually is just turn it over to Lisa and get out of the way. <laughs> let, let the creatives be creative. Uh, and so, you know, so with that, Lisa then has taken the show and developed numbers and elements that uh, uh, work or, or announce the 300th yes. anniversary and make it more celebratory for the season. Um, so that's that's exciting for this year. So we've got a, a, a lot of new numbers in the show, and um, it's so if you did see it 20 years ago, it's not the same show. Uh, but again, back to the money. You know, we've raised millions of dollars with Fiesta Noche over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to raise more millions of, of dollars. Of course, yes. And uh, we do that, and we're successful. And we then work with the people who really do the heavy list, lifting, like Bert Feaster here, who's the mm -hmm. former CEO of Respite Care San Antonio. Uh, that's why we're here ultimately because we raise money and we give it to organizations like Respite Care uh, around town. So I'll turn it over to Bert to uh, talk to A very worthwhile them. organization. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, throughout the evening, we've been celebrating history and the phenomenal performers. Uh, I want to focus just a bit of the lasting gift. Sure, it's the memories, it's the history, it's the awe that we have that is captured that evening and the memories created. The lasting gift for me applies to the heart, uh, and that's to the children that benefit. Imagine the tens of thousands of children that have benefited from Fiesta de Noche del Rio. You know, Elizabeth, you and I have been to many events, saw you just last week, but we think of volunteerism and we think of that component of raising funds. It usually has a start, and then Edwin does a brief, deep breath and say, it's over, it's concluded, we have finished. Think about the men and women of the Alamo Kiwanis. How many years they've done this. You have a volunteer chairman such as Matt that uh, might not be an entertainer. He might <laughs> not be a choreographer like Lisa. One of his jobs is helping to select the cast and ensuring that it'll be entertaining and that guests will get their value. Imagine a business professional committing one year in learning and right. then one year as the chair and all that work is done night after night yeah. throughout the summer and the gift is lasting and supporting children's charities. Wonderful. Like respite care. Like respite care. Yeah, that's right. uh, think of the goodness it's created and where I'm very fond is respite care and any baby can and where I'm currently, my passion is with children's bereavement. So many of the charities that you support are small charities. Like Noche del Rio, they were founded in San Antonio, oftentimes through a parent's or a mother's heart needing care for a child or a child that has special needs or a disability and they didn't find it and they created it. Those charities are the ones that are now support, being supported by Fiesta Noche del Rio and giving that spirit of the goodness that's created. 
respite care cares for some of the most vulnerable of children, children with special needs from throughout Texas, but also that have been harmed, that are in a safe place, that are victims of abuse or neglect. Imagine walking into the Arneson River Theater, seeing all the performers, and we're invited to the front row to be seated and be held like the stars that our children are and knowing that that goodness is there. So many of the folks, the guests throughout the years were in awe that they spent their dollars, not at a theme park or mm -hmm. not in a restaurant necessarily, but where they were so engaged was, I've enjoyed this. It has been wonderful. It's been a delightful evening, but help me understand this is volunteer driven and the proceeds benefit children like those that were seated in front of me. Imagine that goodness that's created. Salute. It, that's got to make you. It's a really wonderful really feedback good. loop that we get because when we see those children mm -hmm. uh, at these various organizations, you, you melt and you know that every time, every minute spent, every dollar spent uh, is so well worth it. You know, and that's that's why we all keep coming back for sixty-two years. And then that goodness that the Alamo Key Wellness do every year when they go out to the children's shelter and celebrate their own Christmas party. And they'll even dress up as Santa Claus and go out there and deliver gifts. That's what drove us as performers to be able to then turn around and model the exact same thing that they did. And then that's why every year we go and visit the children's charities as well. Because every performer needs to know where their funds, you know, that the entertainment and the money that comes in, where that goes to. And so the stories that we hear of the diapers that are being purchased, the milk that is being purchased, even a helmet for a child that had, you know, brain problem, um, is, I mean, it is, you talk about heart. Alva Kiwanis is a perfect example of it. And as artists, what a treat to be able to perform. That's why we always end the show. What a great show for a great cause. And we hope that, that will continue for many years to come. Yes, yes. let's hope so. Yes. Let's hope and, so. And along those lines, as you know, you know, one of the things we want to do is be back here in 13 years for our 75th anniversary. Uh, hopefully my child is, and her kids are coming back for the 100th anniversary. Uh, and to do that, you know, we have to continue to be, you know, aggressive in working with uh, our partners at the city, uh, San Antonio Parks Foundation, obviously the communities and local businesses, so that we can keep the Arneson as the gem that it is, as you know, over the years, it takes a pounding because it's outside. Uh, it needs a lot of TLC, and you know we have raised money over the years to put some money back into the Arneson, and as well as pay dancers, as well as you know do all the things, give money to, to birds organizations and others. Um, but you know we want to keep that Arneson River Theater. Uh, top notch, make it state of the art for everybody yes. to enjoy. And we're very grateful to the Alamo Kiwanis Club for doing that, for taking the lead in preserving our beautiful Arneson River Theater and taking care of its needs. Well, it's, it's a community effort. We need everybody's help, so you know we're happy to do it. And, and I'm going to mention, because you, you were talking about how uh, Matt and, and the Alamo Kiwanis uh, have a say in the selection of the cast and well, he's, he's not clueless about performers because your mother was a ballet dancer, right? She was right? a ballerina, yes. Which, yeah. She was. In New York City, yep. How about that? So, so you know, I didn't get you know any of, I did not get any of her grace and, and, uh, <laughs> and beauty. Nothing. Nothing, that's, nothing to me. <laughs> well, well, now we have a video, I do believe, of some of the other charities who have benefited from the Alamo Kiwanis Club. I'm Susan Osborne. I'm with Children's Association for Maximum Potential, well known otherwise as Camp Camp, so that's our kind of how people know us. So um, camp serves individuals with special needs and we take children um, with all kinds of disabilities. They might have some physical disabilities or they might have some developmental disabilities, autism, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, um, so the whole gamut of, of that. Um, we take kids that sometimes no other camps will take, um, kids that might be on ventilators or have trachs that need overnight care. So um, really they have no other place to go but camp. So we got to know Kwana's uh, club, I guess about five years ago, um, through some, some participants that were members of the club um, and met with Heather. And we, we go out there and we're, we're so thankful for what they do. They help us support um, those kids going to camp. I'm Marion Sokol, I'm the Executive Director of Children's Bereavement Center. 
Children's Bereavement Center is rather unique. Uh, we're a program dedicated to helping children who have experienced grief loss. So we work with about 1,200 children a year who have lost parents, brothers, or sisters. We have uh, just tremendous support for the community. I think one of the most important things is that all of our services are offered at no charge to the families. So and we never want a parent to feel they can't pick up a phone if they have a child who's grieving. Um, we are supported by grants, charitable foundations, special events, and I think like most executive directors, I spend a lot of my time worrying about how are we going to sustain this organization. Uh, but San Antonio is a very giving place. In fact, last year we expanded and helped uh, create a center that's under our auspices in the Rio Grande Valley. And most recently, we've been down in Sutherland Springs since the shooting there, and we're st uh, starting a center, and open we'll be opening there in the next month or two. Our counseling, I guess, like, it's different than just talking to someone. It's expressive play and art and expressing feelings. Sometimes there are just no words when you lose a parent, and particularly if it's a violent death. So our emphasis this year will be on more individual counseling at Sutherland Springs, as well as our summer camp for about 75 children in the Hill Country. My name is Cynthia Hamilton. I'm with the Autism Treatment Center, and I'm the development director there. So the Autism Treatment Center has been around in San Antonio for 40 years. We started out as a school um, for children with autism who could not be served in their public schools. And over the years, we expanded into adult services and therapy services to meet the demand as autism became more prevalent. So many of our services are um, through contract services with different government entities. So we've got a diverse source of funding. Um, but as most everybody who's worked in this sector knows, that what you get from the public to pay for services doesn't always cover the true cost of those services. So that gap we have to fundraise for. Um, not only that, if we want to grow, and since autism is growing in our community and the need for services, we've had to expand and that comes from fundraising. So this was the first year that we were funded by the Alamo Kiwanis Club and we were so thrilled um, because we've known about them for years and um, know that they support many organizations and many great causes. And so to be selected really spoke a lot about um, our ability to um, communicate what we do and how important that need is. I think the, the Qantas Club just gives from the heart. They support some of the best charities in town. They work so hard and that there's such good that comes out of it for our city, the economic benefit, the, uh, the showcasing of our community. It's, it's really unique and I think very precious. I do, what I think is so special at this is as nonprofit organizations, the families that we serve so often do not have the ability to get involved. So we really need to recruit people to help us that aren't living with the issues every day, whether it be you know, poverty or disability or tragedy. And so to have a group of people that aren't um, directly living with autism every day, but understand the need and can do that for us means so much. And that they're doing it with an event that helps um, uh, celebrate the cultural history of San Antonio makes it more special. And we really can't thank the Alamos Kiwanis Club anymore. I mean, they really support and understand children's needs here in San Antonio. And they're, they're giving, you know, sometimes the schools and the governments, you know, those funds don't come in. And it's organizations like the Kiwanis Club that we do what we can do. Well, what a beautiful night of memories of Fiesta Noche del Rio as we enter the 62nd season. Oh, my God. And I am truly honored, truly blessed to have been just a small part of Fiesta Noche del Rio, part of the Fiesta Noche del Rio family, along with the Alamo Kiwanis Club. Y'all keep doing those wonderful things, those wonderful fundraising projects. And um, I, I just have so many wonderful memories of the interaction with the audience. I think that's my favorite part of the show, welcoming the tourists. Where are you from? We've had people from China, from, I mean, so far away, all, all over everywhere. Europe. I mean, they come from everywhere, and you're so surprised 
And then we have some people from the west side of San Antonio and the south side of San Antonio. Yeah, I love it. Of course, the local audiences. We love to all to see the local audiences, too, because they get it. You know, whatever we do, right? They get it. They know what's happening, so and they can join in. So that's always fun. And the singer Chayito and Lisa, you know that when you're singing, don't tell me you haven't swallowed a few bugs. <laughs> I, I know, when I sang Cielito That's Lindo, right. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I may have swallowed a couple of bugs there, but that's okay, it's protein. <laughs> <laughs> so they say. Yeah. So they tell me. But anyway, now uh, it, it's just been terrific. And again, I'd like to thank Urban 15, George C. Snettles, Pat C. Snettles. Thank you so much for having us. As Lisa says, que viva San Antonio, que viva, que viva Fiesta Noche de Rio.